Hello everyone, my name is Mohamed Esmail, I'm the founding engineer of iMesh and in this session, we'll have a look at Kubernetes Gateway API versus Ingress. We'll understand what is Kubernetes Ingress, how it works and how the Gateway API works and their differences. We'll be comparing them uh, in on basis of few of the features that we usually expect uh, uh, from a traffic management solution. And then we'll also have a look at some of the code examples to, uh, to see that how Gateway API and Ingress compare to each other on that developer experience side of things. Let's have a look at Kubernetes Ingress. Here we can define rules to route external traffic into the cluster. It provides features such as load balancing, virtual hosting capabilities, and SSL termination and all. Uh, although you need to have a controller running that will implement all these rules so that you can use it. And the way to implement that is by using uh, uh, the Ingress resource that is provided by Kubernetes and uh, the client resource will come through it and it will end up in the service. Now let's have a look at the Gateway API. Gateway API does all the same things that Ingress does, but it is using different CRDs to do so. So we have a few CRDs available here. You can see we have a Gateway class. It is used to specify the controller that is implementing the Gateway API. Then we have Gateway, which basically uh, binds the listeners for the external traffic to come in. And then we have HTTP route, TCP routes uh, that define the routing rules for the traffic that is coming through the Gateway. Now all of these work together for you to manage the traffic in, in the cluster. Now say for example, if you want to use a different uh, a provider, a different controller, you can change that in the gateway. You might want to handle a traffic differently for some gateways, just change the name of gateway in an HTTP route. So you can do a lot of things uh, because of this declarative nature of gateway API. Then this is how the traffic flow works. So once the client request comes in, uh, the gateway uh, uses the whatever controller you have provided or whatever vendor of controller you are using to evaluate those, uh, the gateway API definitions. And then it passes that to the HTTP or TCP routes that is there. And eventually after the request routing has been done, it goes to a specific service. So we'll be using four dimensions for comparison. We'll be comparing uh, Ingress and the gateway API in terms of multi-tenancy, in terms of whatever the specifications they have, whatever the advanced traffic management capabilities they provide and if they are extensible or not. So let's start with multi-tenancy. Ingress causes a lot of problems when using in shared clusters with multiple tenants. As you have only one uh, Ingress resource, so it's highly likely that someone else applying any other rules would overwrite your rule and you need to have proper ALBAC rules set up just for few of the basic simple tasks. But when it comes towards the gateway API, since we have seen that it has a very role delegated uh, CRDs, which can be used to do certain tasks, so uh, a developer needs to only worry about HTTP route. And there may be a cluster admin who is more uh, used to using the gateway class to have the uh, controllers and all. So since the roles are segregated, it works best when it comes towards the multi-tenancy. So let's have a look at the basic configuration here. So I'm using Nginx uh, controller in this example. And uh, this is the Kubernetes gateway API one. Now you can see in Ingress controller, we have uh, defined an annotation, which is uh, just rewriting the target. Then we are providing the host and the path, the prefix, the service name example, everything is going in one particular resource. And say for example, if someone else is uh, going to add a specific path, maybe let us say in example.com, you have a path API or something that needs to be handled in a different way. So uh, it would cause issue because once they apply the Ingress, it's highly likely that it's going to override this one or some, uh, you know, uh, some complications would happen here and there. But when it comes to the gateway API specification, you can see that first we are defining a gateway and this gateway is just a listener. And in this case, it is using the Istio gateway class. Uh, so basically Istio is the vendor that we are using, which is implementing the gateway API's functionalities. Now say for example, if I want to use Nginx, all I need to do is change Istio to Nginx or something like this, right? But uh, uh, apart from that, you can also see that we have an HTTP route defined here. Now in this HTTP route, it's it's such a, uh, it's a, it's a part of traffic handling feature where it's not dependent specifically on the gateway. The same API, uh, same HTTP route can be used with different gateway if you simply change the gateway name over here as it's referring to the gateway defined above. And whatever routing rules and path matching you're doing for this gateway, you may need the same, uh, you may need a different uh, like matching strategy and all even for the same service from a different gateway. Well, you can simply define a different HTTP route. You can refer it to a different gateway. And this implementation is untouched. 
and we are not even touching airbag as of now and still we are getting a good proper segregation uh, when it comes towards managing a traffic uh, from the gateway api specifications now let's discuss about specification so we have already seen an example how ingress uh, resource and the gateway api resources uh, differ but apart from that also it's very tough to work with uh, ingress because it has a lot of annotations that you need to take care for a specific vendor now say for example if you are using in nginx the set of annotations they have provided or the way they have achieved one specific uh, traffic management problem might not be the way some other uh, uh, like implementer is going to do right so the vendors have been given an open hand here because there is no specification they can choose whatever they want to do and the way they want to implement which is fine for them because they are having their own expertise to do so but it becomes very tough for someone who is wanting to migrate from one vendor to another because now you have to rewrite the entire traffic management flow if you are moving from one vendor to another right gateway api on the other hand it says that okay we'll standardize few of the things if you are doing traffic management if you are doing something like canary release weighted load balancing stuff like that let's prepare a standard for it and this, these standards is being now provided to all the vendors that whoever is implementing gateway api needs to adhere to these standards so even if you are using the same configuration of the gateway api as we have seen you might have to uh, like change the different vendor uh, like you want to go with a different vendor uh, for certain cases you might to go in different vendor in some other cases as well it's very easy just now you can change the gateway class name and you're done that's how easy it is with gateway api because the standardization also helps the uh, whoever is implementing it the vendor to implement all the core features and if some vendor is lacking the core feature that you need you already have the extensibility that we'll be discussing so let's have a look at an example here so in this case i'm doing a header based uh, uh, like matching and i'm passing the traffic to a different service based on their header value now in case of nginx you can see that i'm using an, a specific annotation and this is very specific to nginx you can see even the annotation name is nginx ingress kubernetes io and this is the service snippet and then again i'm specifying whatever path and all is there in the specification and that's how it's working on the contrary we have the gateway api and as i have mentioned i'll be using http route here because you just assume that the gateway is defined you don't have to always worry about the gateway not being available or you need to write one for yourself no you need it to write it once and you can use it multiple times so in this case what it's doing is it's simply matching the header and it's saying okay if there is a specific value present in the header route the traffic to this service if not there is this fallback and all the traffic is going to end up in this service anyways right now this is how easy it is to implement your header based matching in gateway api but if you see the nginx example uh, it's quite like you have to write like a, a c like structure whatever they have defined in their own documentation the way nginx works so i'm not bashing nginx or any of such providers but this is the reality this is how they choose to implement it and this might work for people who are already in love with these technologies but as and when your requirement changes and you want to move to a different resource altogether different vendor altogether whatever you have learned so far is not going to be helpful so the concepts definitely it's going to be there but the way to implement it in a different vendor is again something which you have to spend some time to learn and which in, in implementing it in a particular environment might cause you error because you are a beginner in that so on the contrary we have the gateway api specification which you only learn it once and you can use it everywhere it doesn't matter whichever vendor you're going with if they are uh, providing support for gateway api you are already sorted you don't have to rewrite any uh, configuration you don't have to do anything other than just changing the uh, controller name so we have uh, in advanced traffic management also ingress falls short on a lot of things uh, when we see the functionalities it's very limited in scope and it is also very much dependent on the controller that you are using so few controller might be providing these functionalities few of them won't be providing few of them providing it in a better way easy to implement few of them providing it which is uh, very tedious to implement but however those things go away when when you come to gateway api the scope of features whatever that is present in the gateway api is vast from day one a lot of core functionalities that you see in gateway api is one of the advanced functionality in some el someone else's uh, you can say ingress or uh, someone else's uh, controller right so it is very easy to do those things from the gateway api perspective here it opens doors for devops people to configure granular routing uh, you know cross namespace referencing all those things even without the use of uh, uh, the uh, rbac policies you are able to 
provide proper segregation in cross namespace scenarios we'll be looking at an example so let's go ahead and let's see a canary deployment that is being done using the nginx controller and the one that is being done through the gateway itself you can see i have to write two different service here because first i'll have to manage that okay whatever in annotation i'm specifying this is a canary deployment and 10 percent of the weight is going to go into this service and uh, in the other example all this traffic is going to come here but yeah so the traffic segregation and all these things so you see how tedious it is to just implement something using ingress now it's not the fault of the provider or anything but ingress is definitely falling short on a lot of things right and as the uh, requirement changes and as the uh, like progression happens in, in the ecosystem of enterprise uh, the scale they work at definitely ingress is falling short in helping them achieve whatever their uh, development goals are in time now in the case of http route it is as simple as writing weight in the backend refs again i'm not going deep into what is the definition of these uh, crds and all you can definitely check our previous videos but this is how easy it is to achieve weighted traffic canary and all those things right now let's talk about extensibility so ingress as we have seen we have seen a few examples and it's tedious to use annotations here and there even for the basic task now just imagine the dancing you'll have to do with the annotations if you want to achieve something that is out of the bound or something which is uh, you know way, way off the capabilities of ingress so gateway api outweighs the extensibility capabilities in ingress by light years it provides you crds custom filters and policies that you can use to extend uh, your application and uh, the way it is implemented in gateway api is far more intuitive far more easy to understand as compared to whatever we have seen so far in ingress now let's have a look at the example so uh, in this case if i go to the extensibility you can see that i'm using a, a specific http filter and it is uh, basically it's referring to some uh, stable.example.com whatever the group is its kind is a different kind its name is different now this is just to highlight that this is not the crd that is provided by uh, the gateway api right it's just a random thing it's just something which you might have used from a different vendor something else that you have installed some other crd that you are using and you are able to use it with gateway api now that's how easy it is to implement extensions and all you can also extend the uh, uh, like http routes and such routes that you route the traffic to an external third party api uh, where uh, you know that service is not in your cluster but it's deployed somewhere else so you can also do that so uh, yeah so we can see that extensibility part also is very well uh, taken care by the gateway api and we won't be facing much challenges over there now before going to summary i'll also like to highlight an example of a reference gateway so uh, sorry reference grant so here you can see uh, that uh, the http route is present in the namespace foo but however it is trying to access a backend ref which is present at a namespace bar now ideally this won't work because the http route is in a different namespace and your service itself is lying in a different namespace the way to do it is you have a reference grant crd where you specify that okay even if this CRD, reference grant is being created in namespace bar it is saying that from for all the http route that is present in namespace foo allow them to access my services that's all it does on a very high level it, it's doing the same thing and now if I apply the reference grant and then the HTTP route, I'm able to route the traffic perfectly in a different namespace as well. Now see, we haven't touched RBAC yet. There is no example where I have highlighted, okay, this is the RBAC policies I'm using here and there. This is everything done through the CRD itself and you still have a lot of granular and proper segregation available, right? So that's the advantage of using Gateway API. Now to summarize everything, we have seen multi-tenancy, which is pretty hard to implement in the ingress gateway and when it comes towards the gateway api it is multi-tenant by design it has role-based crds available for you to use in specifications there is no standardization available in kubernetes ingress as a result it's very annotation heavy and very opinionated in terms of whoever is the implementer or vendor that is uh, applying like implementing the ingress on on the gateway api side we have that it has a proper standardization it is not controller like very dependent on the controller side the core features are supported by all the controller and need to be implemented in a specific manner for advanced traffic management we have very limited support very limited scope in terms of ingress and uh, when in the gateway api itself we have a lot of things that is supported by default so even for a, for a uh, like advanced mid to advanced traffic management solution gateway api would stand outright you don't even 
have to use the extensibility capabilities but even if you uh, are going towards uh, using the extensibility capabilities you have crds custom filters policies available for you and you don't have to deal with the uh, all the shenanigans of annotations that is uh, present in the ingress and as a result of this comparison you can see that for an enterprise based application choosing gateway api is like standardizing or just uh, uh, like uh, fixing your uh, entire traffic management once because if you plan to switch con uh, switch controllers if you plan to switch vendors in future it's very easy you all ha all you have to do is change the gateway class name if you want to implement something custom something very specific that is not present you have a lot of crds filters policies to do so on the other hand ingress is having a lot of issues as we have seen moving from one vendor to another would require you to have an understanding of the new vendor even if you know and you understand the concept that's um, you know uh, happening behind the scenes but you will have to learn a different way to implement that that will cost you time and money and even it's not going to be perfect initially if you are if you are using something very new right so uh, all these things suggest that kubernetes gateway api is definitely going to be a push in future and even a lot of vendors are being supporting it istio is supporting it we have envoy supporting it and there are a lot of other vendors are coming together and supporting gateway api so uh, it's high time that we migrate from ingress to gateway api for valid reasons and that is the reason why kubernetes even had the gateway api they were not happy with ingress definitely right so that's all for this session thank you very much